ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Shit's about to hit the fan. Welcome to Unsanctioned Thursdays on Wrestling with Freddy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Unsanctioned Thursdays with your hosts, Jeff Dye and Freddy Brenz Jr. Let's start the show. No electric guitar for you guys today. <laughs> We ran out of money in the budget, so it's just uh, I think it's you just can our hit with a little electric guitar. <laughs> yeah, there death, death, and destruction. All right, I'll pay for that. I'll pay for that little. All right, sweet, thanks, man. They, thanks. They deserve- um, unsanctioned Thursdays, unsanctioned. We're a little looser. We got the loose lips on this one, and we're going to talk about what everybody wants to talk about, which is CM Punk. I don't know if I'm going to have the same take on this as everybody. Maybe, maybe others do, but I wasn't that hyped i was more confused because it's the opposite of a straight edge punk like (laughs) he fired homeboy on his wedding day and now you're you're back at the company that you tried to that you hoped would fail that you wished would fail and that's so not straight edge punk at all so i don't know what the storyline for him can it can't be i'm going to go after the championship that's stupid <laughs> yeah, yeah. like you're going after a championship from a company you wanted to to bury so i think the only story they can go through and I, maybe you agree is the corporate so now the cm the cm stands for corporate man punk and that then he has to be the sellout that it looks like he is i mean even Kayla braxton who just does like like reporter work for them was like, Oh, I guess the grass is greener on this side (laughs) and directed it right at him. If she's, if she's not fearful and she's willing to say stuff like that, then anybody's going to say stuff. I remember Ryan Nemeth tweeting and getting banned from collision because he was like, yo, that was soft. So there can't be any sensitivity from him. There can't be any ego from him because at WWE, you are another name on the roster. There. It's Roman Reigns and the roster. And there have been different stars that have come up, but I don't know how this works unless he does the old school corporate storyline where he's in cahoots with the company and does the whole, I didn't sell out, I bought in. That's what Seth Rollins said. And that's what The Rock said before him when he became the corporate champion in in different words, but the same message. So I I don't know, Jeff. I mean, you tell me. We can talk about, you know, and follow up on what we said on the other po- podcast, or we can just kind of riff on this, whatever you want to do. I think it'd be a cool storyline if CM Punk poisons WWE. What if they just play into him being a backstage, a locker room C word, as <laughs> Seth Rollins called? What if they, what if that is the story? Make a bunch of fake melees backstage like they did in AEW. AEW had real fights. So what if we pretend that Phil is doing all this? Oh, like the Dwight Dwight Schultz Japan storyline when he went to Japan and it was the fake reporter that he knocked out, like the real one that he knocked out. Drum drum it all up. Make it look like he's causing all this backstage heat and him. And the problem is we already know Dave Meltzer, as much as he is a great part of the wrestling community he really does kill the whole uh k he really like reveals what is real and what is it i knew within 30 seconds or probably 30 minutes that seth rollins wasn't really as upset about cm punk coming back as he was letting on it's a shoot so how did you know that how did you know dave Meltzer? Fake? that's that's the problem is that dave Meltzer's so plugged in he knows exactly like he, he knew that drew mcintyre actually was upset not necessarily about CM Punk, but that he was actually just kind of upset that night. He was upset. He slammed his locker. He went home in his ring gear. He was throwing things around a little bit and huffing and puffing. And we knew that he was actually upset. We didn't know what he was actually upset about. That wasn't a shoot. However, the Seth Rollins was a shoot, and he's really hamming it up like he's mad. Here's how you knew it was fake. Michael Cole's holding him back. I mean, what? what, what that was on. Yeah, that was weird. And that's what kind of sucks is – all the interviews that Rollins had given made it feel real, yeah. right? Like, I'm glad he's gone. That guy's a cancer, this and that. Like, saying all that stuff on the air, it made it feel real. So that's a shame if if, if Meltzer figured out that it was fake because then that means, they're, that means the storyline's going to be he's going to go after the World Heavyweight Championship, Seth's title, and I don't care about that story. Ah! 
Yeah, if it's I don't not care real. about that story either. And if it was real, Seth would never give him that shine. He would never give him that match. If it that's sure. how you know if, if they wrestle, then it was all bullshit. And every yeah. interview he gave was fake. And I really hope that's not the case. They would have just I kept really them separated. The, the WWE's big enough that you're not sharing too much of a space with each other. You can avoid people you don't oh, like. Oh, they do it all the time. They do yeah. it all the time. What I will say is the the positive of CM Punk coming back really shows that Vince is gone, doesn't it? It really sh- <laughs> it really proves that that Dude, old he talked guy so is- much trash on Punk when I worked there, man. He was like, he doesn't look like he can kick anybody's ass. Why are we pushing this guy? Like he was so <laughs> not a CM Punk guy at it all. It shows that Vince is not in creative anymore, which is no. also a nice little green light to maybe some people coming over from other places like Sasha Banks. You know, Ricky Starks has a great relationship with uh, with Cliff Cody. and CM Punk. So, you know, you could see a lot of that. I, I could see that this this is just a good sign that Vince is not. It's proof that Vince is not creative anymore. Yeah, how about this though? What if <laughs> this is so? This is such an unsanctioned Thursday idea for me. What? What? Wouldn't it be great <laughs> if the big reveal over at AEW that the devil was CM Punk? Like, what if he was, <laughs> and the entire time that he was gone, they were just kind of plotting this storyline, having a guy wear the devil mask, acting like, you know, just yeah. until they could get Punk back. And then they surprise all the wrestlers and they surprise all the fans that it's actually CM Punk under the devil mask. That would have been the hugest, funniest, silliest thing ever. I would have loved, loved, loved it. And um, he just but anyway. kills their story by signing with WWE. They're like, oh. What? Well, no, <laughs> no. I meant if I meant if he if he didn't sign with WWE, if he would have just like that would have been the big reveal, dude. People would have lost their minds. I felt bad for AEW on Saturday, man. They must have just been buried with that pay per view and with Punk debuting there, and then they just have Collision on. It must have been their yeah. lowest number ever. It is tough. Well, I still I still watched Miro wrestle Daniel Garcia though. <laughs> yeah. Well, I watched all of it. I you know. I, I was know. like, yeah, that was a good ass match, man. <laughs> it was the first time Garcia did the dance thing where I liked it because he was like doing it to Lana. <laughs> I got the the punk stuff is tricky. It it's is, like, dude. I'm not a punk guy. I've never been a punk guy. I'm, that doesn't mean I'm a hater necessarily. I mean, sometimes at times, I guess I am. But what I will say is that he. I am here for the drama. I love yeah. that kind of stuff. So for that reason, I'm glad he's back. I'm glad what's happening. I think I love a little shakeup. So this this is it's exciting for me for in that way. It's tricky. I hope they can make it work. They couldn't make it work in AEW because his body couldn't stay healthy. So the storylines were getting cut short. When his body was healthy, the storylines were good, like with MJF. So I hope that he doesn't work too much. It's going to be unfortunate for someone or multiple someone's TV time because they're going to lose a lot while he's there. So there'll be some frustrated talent. But CM Punk is CM Punk, and he he commands a lot of attention. So I hope they have a story for him. I really hope it's not I want the, the World Heavyweight Championship that Seth has because that just buries all the the interviews that Seth ever did. But that probably the way it's going to go. I wouldn't he like to a address corporate it, right? punk, though. He has to I address guess it, so. doesn't he? The moment he does, though, you kind of know it's fraudulent. So I, I don't know, man. I I hope that they try something different, but you never you never know, man. Hunter's been doing a good job. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, unless it's stinky, and I'll call it when I see it. Any closing thoughts you wanna you wanna say before we get out of here, sir? Well, I will say that Big Bill over at AEW with your boy Ricky Starks. Yeah. Is back, baby. I love Big yeah, Bill. He is. I'm a big fan. And I wish that Ricky Starks would work on his improv a little bit. Because anytime Ricky Starks would try to pop in a quick line after Big Bill, then it would kind of like, it, it didn't work. And then he would get back to the stuff that was scripted and it was great. Uh, yeah, he's, he's money when it's scripted. When he's Ooh. had time to think about it, he can do some good stuff, man. He's I have very, to look out good. for the improv like stuff. And they need an improv specialist to help teach them. No, oh, something like that. Because it was, it seemed like, like I'm trying to think of the example so I don't just sound like a crazy person. Big Bill named all the bulls. He was saying, like, listen, you think you're blah, 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 but I don't see Dennis Rodman. I don't see Tony Kukoc. I don't see Bill Wellington. I don't see, and he names all these things. He goes, because you aren't any of those guys. You're the guys who get the bubble gum ready for Michael Jordan when it's pregame. Or, you know, he does this great. Yeah. kind of a basketball analogy. And I think Ricky Starks thought it would be funny. He goes, 
I don't know any of those guys because I don't watch sports, but they uh, are. All... You can't ever reject the premise. That's yeah. the first rule of improv. You can't ever reject the premise. Even if you don't know, you have to know. That's and the he goes, first rule, man. And he goes, and I know they're all pretty good. And you're like, what? Like, what do you No, Those are the secondary guys to Jordan. Like, so he kind of like by not knowing the sport, then botched the joke. But anyway. now, improv's hard, dude. Improv's hard. That's why that girl Flo makes so much money because she was one of the best. Yes. And we'll end on Flo because that's a great place to end. Make sure you tune in every Wednesday and Thursday for Wrestling with Friends and Unsanctioned Thursdays. Let us be your favorite podcast. Tell your friends. And if you do, you'll be our favorite listeners. On behalf of Jeff Dye, I'm Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> we out. This has been a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Hold up. 